Hi, my name is Paul Alwitter, Clinical Director for Infectious Diseases at Johns Hopkins and Site Advisor for the Medscape Infectious Diseases homepage. Uh, today I thought a topic that grabbed my interest and may be of interest to you is whether community acquired Clostridium difficile is in our backyard. Uh, we already are grappling with MRSA as a community acquired pathogen and now uh, there is some thought that Clostridium difficile may be uh, causing community-acquired diarrhea uh, more than we have previously acknowledged. The first time I heard about community-acquired Clostridium difficile was a few years ago when there were some reports in the MMWR of people who had none of the traditional risk factors for Clostridium difficile, such as previous hospitalization or uh, taking antibiotics developed a moderate to severe Clostridium difficile disease. Uh, in 2006, the state, of uh, the state of Connecticut, in addition with uh, uh, the Centers for Disease Control, uh, decided to uh, look more closely into whether Clostridium difficile diarrhea could occur in the community. What they did was they uh, had a reporting system uh, through the state and laboratories where positive Clostridium uh, difficile toxin assays were reported and a case was community defined if there was no uh, exposure to a health care facility, hospital or long-term care facility in the preceding three months. Overall, uh, what was found in that year of reporting was 200 and 41 cases of Clostridium difficile that uh, met the case definition for community acquired. Of that group, uh, approximately 25% of people had no recognized exposure even up to one year uh, going backwards uh, with any health care system. And then approximately of this group, another third uh, had no known exposure to antibiotics. Now this group tended to have a diarrhea that was not as severe as uh, the kind that we've uh, become accustomed to in the hospital, uh, but was bloody at times. Uh, half the people needed to be hospitalized, 12% ended up in the ICU, and two of this cohort of community-acquired clostridium difficile uh, diarrhea died. What does this all uh, mean? Uh, the uh, report asks uh, clinicians to consider uh, community-acquired Clostridium difficile with any serious diarrhea. Well, uh, I think that is something that may require hospitalization and perhaps now uh, C. difficile should be ordered uh, for any of your patients that you may be admitting to the hospital with diarrhea. Uh, do we need to be ordering this on an outpatient basis when uh, so much diarrhea is self-limited and due to the norovirus? or uh, foodborne pathogens that are otherwise self-limited? I'm not sure we know. Uh, the burden of this Clostridium difficile community-acquired di diarrhea is not absolutely clear. A couple of surveys have been done. Uh, the rate in Connecticut was judged at 6.9 per 100,000. Uh, to give you an idea, the rate of diarrhea in the uh, adult population is over 1,400 cases per 100,000. So clearly this is a small number. Uh, uh, C. difficile in the hospital, for example, is 240 uh, or so cases per 100,000. So uh, this is just beginning to capture our interest, but I think for many of us that uh, see outpatients work in emergency rooms or uh, take care of patients with uh, severe diarrhea, uh, Clostridium difficile uh, uh, assays for people that have no traditional risk factors now seem uh, to be a prudent thing to obtain and I'm sure we'll be learning more about this particular entity as we try to understand exactly how this hospital-based pathogen now uh, might be in our communities and what forces are at play that might help us identify patients at risk. Uh, thanks for listening and uh, uh, please uh, uh, forward any comments and uh, thanks for watching uh, this blog and using Medscape.